Hey there, I'm Taz Singh, and I've been working with communities for as long as I can remember. Fundamentally, communities are made up of people, so this is my journey going to those communities and talking to those people. Come along with me. Amazing! I'm back. David Price, Redwood JS. I've just gotten the chance to meet Redwood, um, well, I guess David from Redwood, uh, recently, and we're actually here with a bunch of different beautiful trees. I guess, are these Redwoods or are these, like, what sort of trees are these? These are not, you know what, we are in a eucalyptus grove. A eucalyptus grove, that shows you how much I know about nature. I, I never I, I never only, leave my own house. I only so. know that because I've told many people they're a different type of tree, but yeah, these are these are phenomenal. So we have Redwoods um, in Northern California. We have this the Monterey Cypress which are stunning, and then these eucalyptus trees. And yeah, it turns out California's a pretty beautiful place. <laughs> it's a great so. reason to go outdoors, something I, something yeah. I never do, admittedly. So, so that's, that's an awesome uh, like lesson on the types of trees here as well. Um, but yeah, I've, I've gotten to know David recently, and I've, I've come to know him as a really good guy. Um, I think what you've been doing software for about 20 years now, um, <laughs> yeah. which is a long time, and you've, you've learned a lot from that whole process. Um, something we're talking about is kind of how David was involved in startups, and David's you know an entrepreneur fundamentally speaking, and that's kind of how he thinks and kind of brings um, kind of his, like, like his, his, his experience to the craft. Um, that's, the, that's the type of thing that David's working on today. Um, and so, um, yeah, I guess David, I guess if you could tell us more about yourself. <laughs> no, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I, I come at, well, yeah, way back, uh, it's been a couple decades, and I started in software because it was a way for me to, um, I was actually a mechanical engineer. That was my training in school. Oh, really? Yeah, but software, so yeah, early 2000s, PHP is starting to boom, and software became a tool I could use to solve real problems for real people really quickly, mm. um, and started building web applications, and it also became a way for me to be an entrepreneur and start mm. my own business. So that was kind of my history, and I've worked across a lot of industries, um, a lot of different types of projects, and uh, failed a lot, learned a lot, uh, but have really enjoyed the entrepreneurial career. So, and yeah, today I'm, uh, uh, for the last two plus years, I've been working uh, with the team on Redwood JS, uh, open source project, but I'm one of the co-founders at Redwood JS. Oh, amazing! Um, I love that. Um, it, it's 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 similar for me. I've, I've I've been doing software about 20 years now, and it's all it's all startups, and it's all kind of pushing the boundaries on things that that allowed me to kind of learn and develop and kind of hone the craft, fundamentally speaking. Um, it's something I've talked about before on the channel, which is basically the 90/90 rule. Are you familiar with the 90/90 rule? <laughs> no, I, uh, I know the 80/20 rule. You know rule. the 80/20 rule. 90/90. That sounds about more how I live my life. But anyway, <laughs> go ahead, explain. <laughs> So, so the 90-90 rule, um, it was it was kind of uh, coined by this guy uh, Tom Cargill back in Bell Labs. You know, like Bell Labs, like basically basically like basically the lab that Apple stole everything about the about UI design from. Yeah. Um, so kind of foundational to, to kind of computing and and the whole craft of UI design in general. So he coined this this rule called the 90-90 rule, which is that. The first 90% of software development is spent developing the software. The last 10% of software development takes the other 90% of the time, which is which is basically to say that like, yes. like you, you can interpret that so many different ways. Yes. The way that I interpret that is that you kind of the first 90% of your development time are the things you know, the things you understand, the things you can account for, things you can kind of just get through quickly. That last 10% that takes the other 90% of the time is the stuff that you don't know, the stuff that you can't account for, the stuff where the paradigm breaks down and you kind of right. all the assumptions you make just doesn't quite line up anymore. And I'm sure you've kind of gone through those types of experiences oh in your career, as you said, kind of developing application after application after application after application to kind of fundamentally boil it down to what it takes to build an application. Yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll just say this, just to add emphasis. I've learned in my career that that last 10%, which is also the details. Yeah. Right. Keeping your eye on the last 10%, both knowing it's coming, it's normal. But then also like using that as a time to really go deep and focus, like that's what makes a project okay versus excellent. Yeah. And and you can't control all the external outcomes, but but I found and I and really tried to develop skills I had to make that last ten percent as remarkable as I could. And um it, that is that is where the heavy lifting happens, and it's hard. Uh, it, 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 so and, and, hard. And, and so, David, is that why Redwood took such a long time to get to 1.0? <laughs> oh, because there of the it last, is. The last 10 percent. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> I, I uh, have to ask. I longer, have to ask him. Let me. Okay. So yeah, longer. That was good. Longer, <laughs> longer than you even know. So the origin of Redwood even goes back farther uh, to uh, you know four or five years ago now. Uh, 
sitting in a pizza pub, having pizza and beer and talking about um, things we want to build. This is uh, Tom Preston Warner and myself. Tom was also working on Chatterbug his, uh, you know, from GitHub. So Tom was a co-founder at GitHub. And then the next startup he was working on was Chatterbug. There was a gentleman named Peter Pistorius uh, who was instrumental to Redwood getting started. But we were having all these conversations. So it goes way back. Uh, but you know, <laughs> really here's what happened with Redwood. Like we had all these other things we're like, we want to build. And then we built the framework to now build the things we want to build. So I love it. It's even longer. It's even longer than you know, Taz. <laughs> uh, the uh, Redwood is not the point. But we, um, yeah, real quick about what Redwood is. Uh, and, uh, and then I'll back into the story real quick. But Redwood is, we call it uh, an application framework for startups. So it's a full stack framework and fully integrated end to end. We have Prisma, these are, these are the integrated tools. We have a golden path, very Rails inspired. So we have Prisma, GraphQL, and React. Uh, it's multi-client. And then what we did, because we, wanted, we know what it's like to build a full stack application, we said, well, you need testing. Yeah. So Redwood, from the time you install, comes with Jest uh, and other tools. It's got an end-to-end -end test suite, front end to back. Uh, scenarios, you have validations. You need Auth and security. So you start with a secure API by default. Uh, you're going to need to work in design in isolation. So it comes with Storybook. You can install a Redwood project, and the first thing you can do is actually spin up the Storybook server and just start working on components uh, in a Redwood. And we, we did all those choices and made those because we had experiences as entrepreneurs, like you get excited and want to build a thing and like, yeah. you don't want to put the pieces together, right? Yeah. Like that's that yeah. 10%. You don't want the 10% up front. Yeah. <laughs> you want yeah. the 90% yeah. and that should come later. Like, and like you, you, want, you want a framework, you want a toolkit that will allow you to iterate on business problems. Um, you don't want to make technical problems kind of the problem of your business, you know? And, and so um, and, like and Redwood, design. Redwood does that by design. Yeah, yeah. yeah because we, and so the way we talk about Redwood now, um, and, I could, and I, we could talk about like why we made those design choices, given Tom's background at GitHub, one of the largest Rails apps, um, given my background, iterating through a lot of different startups. But we talk about Redwood as a code base, an open source project. It's a project and it's people. Yeah. Because we design for that individual who wants to get a side project going that could be a startup someday. Um, yeah. for, for the teams that are gonna come on board, like they're gonna grow with a project over time, that's who we designed Redwood for. So, and I that's who's that. using it today. I love that, I love that. Um, at the end of the day, it's all about people, right? It's about enabling people. We, we, we write code for people, <laughs> right? If we were writing code for machines, it would just be ones and zeros all day, right? Uh, we write code for people. It's manageable by people and, and getting a, a, a framework like Redwood that works for people and allows them to iterate rapidly on business objectives, which are again for people, um, like, like that just speaks volumes to me. So, yeah. so, if, if, so I guess if we roll back just, just slightly and talk a little bit more about what Redwood is. Um, so um, for, for me, like, like, like essentially I love React, I love GraphQL. Um, I love the fact that, well, Redwood's based off of those things. I love right. the fact that they offer a toolkit that allows you to get up and running quickly, essentially with a GraphQL architecture. Um, there's so many other um, frameworks out there that kind of say you can add GraphQL after the fact, but they don't help you actually get that GraphQL layer up and running. Um, I think, in my opinion, and I'd love to hear from you, but this is just yeah. my, this is just no, my please. opinion. This, this, is, is, see, this is, is where I learned. Like, what do you think Redwood is? <laughs> That's of interest to me. Like, like, like in my opinion, um, having that GraphQL layer, as you said, allows you to go multi-client from the beginning. It allows you to build a web app. It allows you to, to basically build a mobile-ready um, backend that you know you can build a mobile client off of. It allows you to also build like third-party data access. So if you have like third-party API consumers. They, you have a fully fledged functional um, working API that, that's like well designed out of the box that allows you to get started. Um, in, in my opinion, one of the main advantages of GraphQL is, is that it, it enables you to represent your data model and it, it allows you to consume your data model. Um, so, so often I've seen people struggle with that paradigm. Mm -hmm. I've seen people struggle with um, applying authentication on top of that, um, authentication and, uh, and authorization on top of that. And um, for me, a, a bit naively, I have a very cursory understanding of Redwood, but I, I believe Redwood helps you out of the box with a toolkit to help you build a GraphQL API with all of those things. Yeah, so man, these are, these are the topics, right? So, uh, okay, one, what is a modern application going to need to do and be, right? Like, and, and what can we take off the decision load when you're just getting started of which tech stack should I use because I don't know if I'll go this direction or that, right? So you're, you're probably gonna be multi-client and you're probably gonna need a proper backend, right? You're gonna need a place where your business logic can live. 
and then serve like this, it just feels like an infinity of different clients you could have these days. So that's yeah. GraphQL. But then GraphQL, uh, right, it's, it's standards, it's a spec. So you can implement it your own. Like what people get excited about, the promises of it, but then they get really overwhelmed by, well, now it's another thing they have to maintain, yeah. which coincidentally is that's the JavaScript <laughs> ecosystem right now. It's like, <laughs> ah, one more thing I get to maintain, right? So we want to take that pain point away so that, man, you hit another great topic, right? And also your data models in there. So I mentioned Prisma as well. So yeah. out of the box, uh, we work tightly with the guild. Uh, the GraphQL, they were former Meteor Inc. Apollo people, and we're using Yoga right now and Helix. Out of the box, um, it's all, it is ready to go. There's no config required. You have yeah. a GraphQL API, and if you just want to think of it as like an endpoint, that's yeah. fine. Um, but it's secure by default. Yeah. We use directives. It comes with authentication. Um, it comes with depth limiting. We have a bunch of sane security defaults that are mm. just set up for you. <clears throat> and that's all good to go out of the box. And, and, and as, as, like, like essentially for, 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 for folks that aren't as familiar with the GraphQL ecosystem, everything David just said is, <laughs> is exactly what I would also recommend. Like the GraphQL guild, they're working on like insane stuff. Prisma is working on insane stuff. And they've glued it all together beautifully for you. I mean, Helix is a highly performant GraphQL server. Uh, Yoga is a, is a fantastic way of defining GraphQL schemas and kind of serving that out. Uh, Prisma is a great way to represent like essentially your data model yeah. in a type safe manner so that like the rest of your stack can kind of consume it. Um, and, and then and well, glue and it envelop, together nicely. Yeah, and Envelop is a plugin ecosystem that the guild created created that now you can add um, uh, transforms, you could add, uh, so you want to you do analytics or monitoring on top of it, there's a plugin for that. You could do data, like there's... Oh, I love this. It, it's, it's extensible, so, right? So, so, so same so default's it's, it's, extensible. Oh, wait, okay, I, I got, let, me, let me show you this, because I haven't told you the best part yet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, so you were talking about how every, everything matching. So with Prisma, you have, you have your schema, schema.prisma, but you have a model representation of your database, right? Mm. And yeah. then you have, and by the way, you don't have to do resolvers with Redwood, like, because who wants to write resolvers? Like, we take yeah. care of those for you. Yeah. We have command line generators, a la Rails, that let you actually spin up your SDLs that you would need based on your Prisma schema, yeah. right? So you could define your model, and then, and then you need the client. So we have a Web React client integrated by default, and we have this, this uh, we've conceived of this thing called a cell. We call it Redwood cell. It's a higher order component, mostly, that has your query, Right? Mm. If you're looking at the data, if you're looking at the, the, the code in a cell file, it's a React component, your query's at the top, it's got all your state. It's got success, fail, empty, loading. Oh, wow. Those oh, are wow. all components. And so what you would get to do is you get to say, hey, and by the way, this works a storybook, here's my query. This is what I need my front end to be. And oh, that just informed what my data model needs to be in my schema. Oh, and now I can run a command line generator and I have all the SDL. <laughs> Jeez, wow. And, and so when you take away the overhead of doing GraphQL, then people are like, oh yeah, GraphQL is awesome. It's amazing, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, then, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then you have an API that, again, secured by default. So, hey, maybe this query or this mutation is, is open. I want that to be public. Yeah. That's a little directive in your SDL. Yeah. Uh, you have roles, uh, role-based authentication. So this is admin only, or this is public. And um, and it's like it's magical like, to be like, quite so, frank. So, so uh, like 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 everything I'm listening to right now, I feel like David should start like hosting cooking classes because like I'm, <laughs> I'm I'm terrible at making you know anything and like like I'll have all the ingredients, but I won't know how to make it into anything. And basically, what David's done is he's taken all those raw ingredients and just made you a fantastic sandwich out of the box, and you can just go eat. You oh know? man, well and yeah, so, and I can and take so, very like, little. Is, like the is, team has done it, insane. man. It's yeah, isn't so the team. Um, well, and that's oh, so the other side of the project, right? So there's there are four co-founders. Um, Peter Pistorius is the one, and Tom that architected and bootstrapped this. Uh, and then Rob Cameron, who has tons of 20 years of Rails experience. Well, he can't have 20 years of Rails experience, but going back <laughs> with Rails. Uh, and then myself, and then we have a core team that's over 20 people now. Oh, wow. Um, and we, we, we are invested in making Redwood the best modern full stack framework it can be for JavaScript, uh, full TypeScript support, by the way. Um, that lives on modern infrastructure. So it was designed for serverless first, or you could run it at a Fastify server. So all that's cool. And then we are investing as heavily as we can also in the community. We want Redwood to be, uh, and, and for some people getting open source for the first time, like this is the best open source community I've ever been a part of. Uh, people are helpful. 
Well, like, it's like, vibrant. Like, uh, we we uh, are invested in each of, other's success. A lot of what you've just said reminds me of the Rails community, and the Rails community mm. was was a lot of those things. Like like uh, like essentially, I've been a Ruby since 2006, um, and like like essentially, I, I grew up with 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 Rails. Uh, Rails was a kind of a foundational part of of my career, and kind and, and kind of like like for me to build essentially essentially my two startups um, back in Toronto off of Rails, um, hiring developers off of Rails. Um, all of those things are kind of community oriented, and yeah. it, it takes kind of the, the people um, building all these things at the end of the day to kind of get there um, and also that like the technical approach that's basic that basically accounts for those things um, providing all of that out of the box enables you to iterate and kind of and kind of figure out that last 10 percent once you figure that out you give that back to the community the community now knows how to do that you maybe you maybe write that as a plugin or some sort of extension I'm, I'm not sure how, how red works in that way but you, <laughs> yeah. you, you, kind, you kind of offer that kind of learning and knowledge back to the community hopefully you absorb it into the framework and kind of account for it in some way or yes. or, 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 or write blog posts or something about that in some way but at the end of the day it's it's people helping people, um, and 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 that's what makes a fantastic project. So sorry, Absolutely. I want I want to hear more about, no, about, you, about those things. You nailed it. That's exactly. It. So our our mantra that I've told everyone is our mantra is uh, by helping each other be successful with Redwood, yeah. we make the Redwood project successful. Yeah. And so what that does is people realize that by being generous and grateful in their interactions with others in the community, it creates this kind of reciprocity, where we now have people that. You got involved in the project, maybe started a startup on Redwood, came on the core team or were on the core team, got involved in a startup. Um, the core team is now helping startups with Redwood. Those startups are giving back and investing in the framework itself. The startups are getting funded. They're hiring people from the community. And it's just this really kind of beautiful life cycle. And it's, yeah. it's young, like it's growing. We're at the very early stages of it. But it's, it's remarkable to see what can happen when people like come around a common project and really are invested in helping each other be successful. And it's so fun. Like yeah. it's, it's why uh, we had a, we 1.0 launch was about a month ago and we did a startup showcase and we had, and there's, it could have been more, but I limited, we had 13 startups, wow. do five minute demos. <laughs> um, and it was mind blowingly great, right? So we took, we spent two years, so all the things we had to do, that's why it took two years uh, to get all that integration. But two years, and then the highlight, like seeing these startups all get up You've had and show off their products was amazing. 13 startups been using it th throughout your journey then, because like, like surely 13 startups haven't just started oh, using it in the past month, right? Oh, no, so. yeah, no, we had, um, we've had, yeah, we had people start building at like 0 0.5. Wow. Yeah, so we, I mean, there's some things we had to build into our release process to make it possible. Um, you know, a lot of trust with people, and then we got close to them, one of their feedback. Uh, but yeah, no, it's accelerated. We had um, uh, Redwood startups that I know of in the last six, seven months now have raised $20 million in funding. Oh, what? Wow, um, okay. And uh, yeah, and, and that, was, that was all pre 1.0. Wow. And so now it's starting to pick up a little bit because, right, that the 1.0 conveys a little bit of like stability and confidence we're going to be yeah. around. Yeah. Um, like, like, yeah, it's, it's really it's fun. Such, like, and you don't want to be judging a library by its virgin number, but in this case, <laughs> right. um, it, it, it did it, mean it, something. It, 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 it's, it's all about kind of the author's intent to say, okay, now, this, now we're comfortable with you using this. Now we're comfortable that we have a good idea on how it works. Now we're comfortable we got through that first 90%, through that last 10% to 100% to make it to 1.0. And so, um, so it's really good to hear that you're, you're kind of there now and you're kind of you're kind of happy to kind of talk about it more you're happy for people to start using it more you're kind of happy to get essentially get yeah. the ball rolling and so that's that's really cool yeah it's been it's been really fun so it's been a, it's been a great journey and um man we're just i i can't imagine doing anything else right now um and again the, the people are what make it the people are what give you the motivation to go and do like we're doing the webpack and the babble behind the scenes like it is not glamorous uh, like the real uh, how to make an open source project work. But um, again, that cycle of people helping people, building amazing things, coming back with ideas, it, you know, <laughs> it's, it's super fun. And, so, and let me say this, this is really, I'm gonna look at the camera for this one, ready? Hey, all you people watching this video, I have no idea who you are. Um, but two things I want you to know. One, anyone from anywhere is invited to be a part of the Redwood Project. And you could reach out to me or let anyone know in our forums, GitHub, uh, or on Discord that like you're just here and you want to get involved. And we love that. Um, anyone from anywhere could be a part of the core team. And there's a journey to get there. But we really want to be a place where like, if you want to help, uh, we want to find a way that you can help regardless of your skill level or experience or area where you want to invest, right? Like documentation, as important as code. 
Uh, we've got product designers helping us out now, people working on the website, people that are just helping out in the community. Um, like, let us know. And, and if you've never been an open source participant before and you want to, we would be honored if Redwood JS was your first foray into open source participation. And, and everything he just said, I can completely vouch for. I, I, as I said, I've just met David recently. I've kind of, I've kind of, I've, I've, like, I've, we've been following each other on Twitter for a little while now. But I just got to meet him in person recently, and I, like, I, I, this guy is amazing. I, I look forward to kind of <laughs> everything that we're going to do in the future, and I look forward to kind of just seeing what Redwood becomes. I look forward to following your journey. Um, it's super exciting, and and everything you're saying about people and community and kind of like, like essentially that soul nourishing feeling that you only get by helping others. Um, I can, I, I, I love that. And so, David, lovely talking to hey, anybody and so I look you. forward to everything in the future. Yeah, appreciate it.